If you want to follow along, it's tinyurl.com slash penguinwiki. That's our repository. Can you repeat the... Uh, tinyurl.com forward slash penguinwiki. Penguin. Penguin. All lowercase. All one word. <laughs> Is it working? Yeah. It is yeah. working. Only about the way. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so we have created a new web mobile friendly app called Penguin Productivity. And um, <laughs> the Penguin Productivity app is meant to be a different sort of productivity app. We all have too many metrics in our life. We don't need something else breathing down our neck. Um, what it is meant to do is to give you a more relaxed, slightly not um, very serious way of reflecting upon what you're doing, how you conceive about what you're doing and what really qualifies as productivity and how you feel about it at any given time. Um, before we go into the details of the app, I just want to talk a little bit about um, how it was produced. It was produced um, collaboratively by six people, one of which um, Patty McCann is not here at the moment, on three different platforms. So there were Mac users, Linux users, and Windows users all using GitHub. We used the wiki and the issues in order to make sure that everyone knew what they were doing. And we had lots of planning meetings to stop, take stock of what tasks needed to be done in parallel and which ones needed to be done in sequence so nobody overwrote anybody's code or broke anything as we moved along. Um, so we're going to talk about first is the interface and the emojis, and I'll hand it over to Adam. So people have already done a lot of work in creating these really charming, adorable, characterful emoji sets. So in terms of like a sort of general graphical outlay of things, we really wanted to put most of the primary in the actual emoji. So first of all, we chose like a font that we liked because there are different emoji fonts and they have really important subtle differences between things like the expressions that the animals have. <laughs> um, once we managed to mostly get that working, um, we basically chose a set of like 40 of our favorite emojis. So we picked 40 that would, we would characterize as broadly happy ones. 40 as, this is the official designation in the code, not so happy. Um, 40 that were sort of work in progress unsure. Uh, 10, that, sorry. And 10 that are surreal, kind of weird <laughs> objects. Um, so that's where some of the animals and vegetables and minerals went. Um, so the key thing here is that these are deliberately kind of vague. And although apart from that core spinning between generally how feeling about them, we don't ever put the actual official names of the emoji anywhere. We really want people to kind of create their own nuances for what these mean to them. And the way that it works is you put in a task. You, oh, sorry. You put in a task. You put in whether it's a new task ongoing or done. And that's for future development to be able to signify whether you like new tasks or you like finishing tasks. Um, a quantifier, so 15 or 6 or 3, and then a metric that you're measuring by, such as pigeons that bobbed by while you were doing it, or cups of coffee, or error messages, however you want to conceive of your task. Um, once you submit it, it goes to a server-side database, which is, if it's locally run, it's completely private on your system, or if you run it as an app online, it goes to the online system, and it goes down to metrics. Um, and these metrics give you an overview of how you felt in the morning, perhaps you were mostly thinking or feeling happy or not so happy. And this gives you a different way to think about how you've been productive. Um, I will hand it over now to the back end, how it works. <laughs> okay, so um, there was no sort of framework that we were all familiar with, but we were at least all passingly familiar with Python. Um, and two of us were reasonably familiar with the Django framework, so that was what we chose. Um, a lot of the options for convenience we took as the Django defaults. They're reasonably sensible defaults. Um, for instance, the database is SQLite, um, but the flexibility of Django gives you the option of swapping out components quite easily. So were this to be deployed into a larger scale production, it's entirely sensible to swap to it another database and that's possible without actually losing the data that's in the database. 
Um, so that's the framework we were using. Also worth saying that as we were developing <coughs> this, um, this data is actually from us working on it. Um, so this is how we felt at the time. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. And in terms of testing? Yep, so we wanted to make sure we were developing this software in a sustainable way, of course. So we made sure right from the beginning we were thinking about how we'd be able to test the software. So none of us had done using PyTest with Django before, so I spent some time learning how that works. We got a test set up. I then even got it working with Travis integration, so the whole thing has continuous integration from start to finish. And we also, the other integration we put in is we have a citation file format in our repo so that you know um, who did the work. And finally, in order to get a web version of it available. Oh, sorry, just one second. Uh, right, so the, uh, the final thing that we tried to do was to deploy it somewhere so that it was, that it was available and complete. Uh, we've mostly succeeded in doing that. We've uh, deployed it to a URL on Heroku. It's tinyurl.com slash penguin productivity. Penguin, penguin pro productivity. Right. <laughs> um, Thank you very we much. Did, we did have a slight hiccup in that Heroku's not very um, direct. It's, you have to jump through a few hoops in order to serve static files. So the CSS file doesn't quite render the nicely as it does here. So we didn't quite have time to do that. But we did do some other nice things. Um, the, uh, it, it points directly at the, um, at the Git uh, um, repo that we have. So it pulls directly from there once the uh, continuous integrations are tested. So to that extent, we have continuous deployment as well, which is <coughs> quite a nice thing. So in theory, if we did continue to develop this, we could just continue to push to our, to our master branch and these changes will just get reflected as soon as they pass the series of tests that we've implemented. Thank, Thank you, you very much.